Um, basically, this this kind of um, uh, this paper is 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 I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it, it, it's an exercise in like proving my my really strong kind of prior completely uh, wrong, you know, proving completely wrong. I I I, I uh, and this came about from um, a project that that um, uh, that several of us are involved with this this Medicata um, get funded um, information accountability exper uh, experiments. Uh, we were doing the one in Brazil, and we happened to be working in the, uh, the state of Pernambuco in northeast Brazil, which uh, just for by coincidence uh, happened to be the uh, ground zero for the uh, Zika uh, epidemic that I think many of you probably have read about in the newspapers. Um, and so, as as we were working on this project, it, what, it, you know, I, I had no idea what Zika was when I started this. Um, uh, it, you know, it became a, a very big issue, and given given where we were working, we thought we would. Look at it a little bit more systematically, and you know this is it became a huge issue in the news, um, as many of you know, and not not only in sort of in the U.S. Um, but uh, you know the the Brazilian government um, mobilized the army to go door to door in Pernambuco. There were constant bombardments of um, of, uh, of, um, of you know information campaigns about uh, mosquito abatement uh, using insect repellents and. Uh, and, you know, and the problem, as many of you know, is that the, that the, um, we, uh, there was this big increase in the region we were working in, um, in um, children with microcephaly, or babies born with microcephaly, and, and this was eventually linked to, um, to the spread of the Zika virus, which basically came to Brazil in sort of 2013. Um, and I think it was, in, you know, it was in some soccer tournaments in Brazil. Uh, it came in from the, um, the Tahiti team, apparently, that's what people say. Um, and uh, it's, this, it's, a, the, it's a disease is, is not so bad compared to other endemic diseases that exist in Brazil, like dengue, chikungunya, for example. Um, but it eventually started having these fairly, um, you know, horrifying uh, consequences for many um, for, for many women, and brought um, kind of a lot of attention um, to it, you know, worldwide. You know, my to the point where you know my my sort of my uh, aunts and uncles wouldn't want me to come for Christmas because you know they were worried about catching Zika because I had just been. Working, stomping around rural uh, Pernambuco. Um, so yeah, this is Pernambuco. We're working in, as I said, this is, this is the area, this is the, the, the site where um, it, it, um, it, it really is. Uh, Oops. Oh, you know, I'm missing a slide here. Oh, okay. Well, um, the so the sort of the overall kind of um, the uh, the overall sort of theoretical question um, that that sort of motiv motivated the initial hypothesis was that given the, the amount of tension this was receiving um, in Brazil and internationally, I thought that this would be like a perfect um, uh, issue area in which to observe kind of electoral accountability um, amongst the voters. That once, that given it was happening in people's backyard, the, the, uh, the uh, consequences were quite extreme, uh, the costs very high for at least the people, for at least, you know, the, the people who, who experienced it. That um, voters would be quite sensitive to information about how um, badly or, or well their, their government was doing in, in, in combat, combating it. Um, so uh, we went into this um, wanting to test to see uh, whether or not uh, this was the case. Uh, and as kind of some many of the other papers in this this uh, conference have found, we were surprised to find that um, we found basically um, very very little evidence that voters. Um, to see this as an important issue, even in, in in a place that was sort of ground zero for this this crisis, and we have some sort of initial hypotheses that we're working through, um, and uh, the one we've kind of favored right now is that um, this is in the context of an area with lots of endemic mosquito-borne borne diseases, so people are really used to living with um, with uh, these kinds of, of of diseases, and and as a result, it became very it became very difficult for the um, the government. Um, and um, international community convinced sort of local citizens that um, that um, that uh, to, to sort of separate Zika away from like dengue, chikungunya, and these more quotidian diseases that people live with um, um, live with every every day, and especially in the context where you know relatively few people actually suffer you know real direct consequences from from this disease, um, but the few who do, it's like very incredibly uh, incredibly severe. So. Um, you can see here. This is um, this is um, uh, dengue, chikungunya, which are the two main endemic diseases. And here's you know uh, 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 general Zika syndrome. So uh, obviously, uh, you know the number of people being 
affected by Zika uh, at very low by the at least the, at least the most intense uh, effects of it. Uh, while while dengue and um, and chikungunya are much a much um, bigger uh, you know affect many more uh, many more many more people. And you, just to sort of um, to, to talk about the kind of the the um, how I was sort of misled, or how I misled myself, I should say. Uh, you look at the New York Times, and you know, huge discussion about Zika over time. Um, this is when the, the crisis happened. If you actually look at the Brazilian newspapers, um, so here's the New York Times again. You look at Brazil, Brazilian newspapers. You see the photos that follow, which is sort of like the New York Times of, um, of Brazil. It's it's still talking a lot about Zika, but um, dengue is quite up there, right? So there is like less of a gap. So it's not so, so it's not you know maybe as um, overwhelming as you would have seen from perceived from the outside. Um, you look at Jornal de Comercio, which is like uh, one of the major newspapers in Pernambuco. It's like the difference, perhaps a little, little bit smaller. That Zika is a big, is a big issue, but it's you know it's about the same, maybe a little more than um, than um, than uh, uh, dengue in chikungunya. And then finally, um, so I thought something we thought was really interesting. If you look at sort of Google searches, um, like way more people are searching about even during the height of the epidemic about dengue than um, than um, than uh, uh, um, Zika, and even in Pernambuco, like where this is happening, so, which is, you know, if I had looked at this when designing the survey, I would have been, I would have been very surprised, um, because if you sort of talk to sort of elites, you know, academics, and um, and pay attention to sort of the less national government render, this would this you wouldn't have expected that. Okay, so what do we what do we study? Basically, we provide information. Um, we provide information on. Um, on, uh, on a form of sort of local uh, a local policy that is can be implemented by any um, municipality in, in Brazil. It's basically the mayor can decide to hire what's known as these uh, anti-endemic disease agents, uh, and this is heavily subsidized by the federal government. So the federal government essentially has some kind of al allocation formula where they uh, allocate a certain number um, of agents per municipality. Um, that and it's basically they fund ninety five percent of their salary, so heavily heavily subsidized. Uh, uh, subsidized, and if the uh, municipality wants, they can hire more more than that. Uh, some some municipalities hire fewer, many municipalities hire more. And these people are supposed to go around um, and um, both um, sort of educate the public. They're supposed to look for standing water, um, and uh, then also just aid um, kind of local health workers and uh, you know public health officials in um, in, in uh, controlling mosquito. Uh, uh, mosquitoes. So um, then, you know, there's a big push to hire these people during this, this period, and they were, they were, you know, initially they had the army kind of going around doing these things, but then these people, um, these people, the, these people kind of came, uh, took over. Um, so we were interested in, in, we're interested in knowing if this was the main sort of locus of local government's um, um, action against the Zika virus. We were interested in if we could give more information to voters about how the local government was doing with respect to hiring these. These guys that, we, and uh, we would test to see if this had an effect on their vote in in the uh, 2016 elections, which um, uh, was just about six months ago. Okay, so here's the um, here's the very we we were operate, uh, operating in um, uh, the municipalities in Pernambuco, and here's the variation you see in sort of the uh, ratio of agents hired to agents federally funded. So the agents federally funded um, is kind of is an allocation formula. Partly in population, partly on on sort of the the, the um, like uh, you know how many uh, dengue outbreaks there've been in the past or dengue um, incidents. Uh, so it's supposed to take into account sort of you know susceptibility um, to to these diseases plus uh, population size. And you can see, well, you know, actually most um, higher say more than the federally um, uh, funded um, uh, quota. Uh, some um, higher or less. Uh, and you know, there's a reasonable amount of variation there. Uh, uh, so we were kind of trying to exploit that var variation. So what we did was um, we, we were working in context of a partnership with the local auditing agencies. So this is the, known as the Accounts Court of uh, Pernambuco, which is kind of the main accountability institution, institution of horizontal accountability in, in, in the state, which they kind of audit municipalities. And uh, not only do they sort of um, kind of try to ferret out corruption and things, but they also try have see as part of their mission to like give uh, performance indicators to citizenry about about how the local governments are are, uh, are doing. So we, this is a partnership with them. We developed a set of flyers with with them. Um, um, 
this is the uh, we have various ones on education, on uh, corruption, etc. This is the one in Zika, um, and uh, uh, you know we kind of explained what the um, what the um, what the, the one of the responsibilities of the mayor was to combat you know these these diseases, um, and then um, we explained how the municipality is doing relative to other um, municipalities in the state on this on this rank. So we provide a rank basically, and this was. We, we, we settled on a rank after lots of focus group discussing where it just seemed this was most easily understandable. So this is a, a, a municipality that, that, that did pretty well, um, you know, reasonably well. Um, but then you have municipalities um, like uh, Abro Lima, which, you know, did very, very poorly on, on, on this rank. Uh, so this is a super simple survey experiment. I mean, very, very, very simple. Um, um, but we really thought that if we were searching for kind of salience, um, Policy area, this, this would be it. Okay, so um, we have a face to face survey of 2008 residents in 56 municipalities. Um, we essentially block randomized within uh, census tracts, which is our, our, our primary sampling unit. Um, we did sort of a lot of kind of pre treatment, uh, pre survey qualitative data um, focus groups, and then we actually did some post um, surveys, focus groups where we actually recruited some of the same people we surveyed. They, Get a better sense. We had uh, a bunch of case studies done of sort of local politics and a lot of different municipalities. Um, we, we focused on two kind of um, set, set of moderators that we thought were really would be very um, you know we think would be important. So one was um, a if the respondent was in a, in a family that, that where the uh, someone had been pregnant since the outbreak, um, or they had been intending to have a child the next short short period. Um, with the basic idea that of course these people would be the most concerned. Um, and then, um, because Grand Republic was, was the place where there was most uh, most of these uh, these kids with these, with these deformities um, um, were born, that whether or not they knew the family with with, with it, which, which you know, it's not that many people. We had less than a hundred we found in our survey. Um, so you know, there's definitely power issues with that with that heterogeneous effect. Um, and then, uh, in, in terms of our vote, our outcome is. Um, it's uh, uh, this customized um, ballot. So basically, um, what we did is uh, in, in Brazil they have electronic voting where the sort of image appears on the on the screen when you vote. So we um, created a ballot that was uh, customized for the each each municipality. Um, they had to indicate who they were going to vote for, and then um, or they could do blank or null or, or not turn out. And then we had had, had like kind of like a um, uh, a uh, uh, kind of a secret ballot burn that they put in there that we, you know, this little number that we connect back to the original questionnaire. Um, you know, of course you worry about, um, you know, uh, demand effects or, um, or, um, or just that uh, self-reported vote won't, won't correspond very well to actual vote. Um, and sort of, a, I, I don't have that in, in this paper, but um, in another paper we sort of show that um, we get pretty close to uh, actual vote totals. So we we're, we're pretty happy with with uh, how that turned out. Um, okay, so here are the uh, sort of the main results. So first, um, if you just look at all, um, uh, we just split for now above the median, below the median in terms of the in terms of the ranking. Um, if you do a continuous, uh, you get a very similar picture. So so for the city was showing this, and then also if if you um, we also ask questions about. Um, this is not in the paper, but we need to put it in there. Um, we ask questions about voters' priors, so benchmarking of people's priors, and we just we we're just worried there that people don't have really well-formed priors on these things, so that the prior measure is very noisy. So um, we we can include them; it doesn't really change anything. Some some, um, but uh, I'm just not very happy with 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 those measures. So so we just went for this absolute performance. Um, so if you have um, have or planning to have a baby, so we combine these two, whether or not they had uh, they had been pregnant during the, the epidemic, or um, they were planning to have a baby just for power reasons. Again, almost nothing, and then you know, basically nothing. Um, um, and then uh, the one area where um, oh yes, this is no, and this is yes, sorry. So uh, this is not having planned to have a child or have a child, and this is uh, yeah. So maybe there's something a little bit more there, but it's you know. Five minutes, okay. Uh, super noisy. Um, what about um, no someone microcephaly? Okay, no, uh, it's almost exactly zero. 
But here, um, um, we, we do find some suggestion of something. Again, we have a small subgroup, so there's only so much you can say here. But you know, give, the point estimate is much larger um, than um, than and, and the other uh, the other groups. Um, so um, this does suggest that at least you know when you have this personal thing, which is not surprising at all, um, you do you do seem to react more to this type of type of information. It just for for most people, since it's not personally affecting them in any way, even though it seems to be a major crisis in recent times, it doesn't it doesn't really affect 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 their uh, their vote. Okay, so so why might this be? Um, so we just have some very basic kind of explanation right now. Um, one is we, we ask open-ended questions about what the most important issues are, are in people's municipalities, and despite sort of all the, the media attention, you know, basically um, almost no one mentioned the mm -hmm. specific. You know, people mentioned health, but they're almost always talking about in the context of sort of basic primary services, like whether medicines were available for health posts or doctors, the you know presence of doctors, etc. Uh, you know, people mentioned private jobs. You know, sanitation we might construe um, having to do with um, uh, uh, these diseases were much less uh, prevalent, uh, and almost I basically I don't think anyone specifically mentioned the um, uh, We also looked at um, um, uh, uh, sort of political platforms. So in in Brazil, all uh, parties are supposed to post their, their local platform. So we kind of searched for um, we just did a very simple keyword search to see what what were people talking about with respect to health issues. And here's one. So this is from Morelandia. Um, uh, where this guy running for running for mayor, and you know here he talks about how oh we need to we need to develop more um, you know combat Zika you know he lists a whole bunch of other things related to health here but in Zika down down here on the list but this is like actually very surprisingly rare basically um, uh, family health which is basically refers to um, primary care these, this primary care program where, where they send sort of nurses to people's houses like that was mentioned. You know, huge amount of times, uh, uh, you know, almost every 80% of time, um, while Dengue, Jinguni, and Zika were like barely mentioned. So clearly it's just like not a politically relevant, salient um, issue despite the, all the, um, um, the hubbub. And from, uh, from the um, qualitative work that we did from the, the, from the focus groups, it really just came out that people were so used to dealing with sort of mosquito-borne viruses and, 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 um, and uh, and sort of they they they, 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 they tended to see Zika in, in a similar frame. So we like asked about um, Zika, and people would just like sort of make jokes about when they sell mosquitoes around and saying, "Oh, here, there, here comes Zika." Um, and uh, you know they wouldn't they don't wear uh, a repellent. Uh, it's just very much normalized. So it's, it strikes me as like an interesting con uh, like interesting question to how to overcome these um, sort of norms that are, or customs or, or uh, that have developed around around these endemic diseases. Um, so next steps. So one thing we really need to do is have a better dialogue with public health literature on risk perception. We've only just barely started doing doing that. Um, um, there's a, some other interesting questions we have on there that we haven't fully explored yet. Like um, uh, one one thing we thought that maybe people didn't like the fact that the government was um, would uh, kind of forcibly enter enter households in order to clean up standing water, et cetera. And to our surprise, basically almost everyone thought this was a great idea. So from, from like an American perspective, I'm like. You know, I, I can imagine trying to do that in Texas or something, but uh, but in Brazil, I, you know, they say, "Come on in." Um, um, we want to benchmark this against other types of information, which we did give other types of information, so um, we can benchmark it against it. Um, and um, you know, it, people do respond to other types of information, it's just not this one. Um, we want to get municipal level microcephaly data, but we have to make an information request to get that, so we can possibly do some heterogeneity by municipal level prevalence. Uh, more in-depth analysis of focus group data and then more in detailed analysis of campaign to just to really make sure that it wasn't a major issue in the places we were working. So yeah, that's all. Thank you.